Live from Stanford University, it's theCUBE. Covering Stanford Women in Data Science 2020. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hi and welcome to theCUBE. I'm your host Sonia Tagare and we're live at Stanford University covering the fifth annual WIDS Women in Data Science Conference. Joining us today is Yashu, the head of data science at LinkedIn. Yeah, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about your role and about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is, uh, first of all, uh, the, uh, the biggest professional social network uh, where we have a massive uh, economic graph that we have been creating with millions, actually close to 700 million members and uh, millions of companies and jobs and, and of, of course, you know, with students of skills and, and also at schools as well as part of it. And, uh, and I lead the data science team at LinkedIn and, and my team really uh, spans across the global presence that LinkedIn's offices have. Um, and uh, yeah, really working on various different areas that both thinking about how we can iterate and understand and improve our products that we deliver to our members and our customers and also at the same time thinking about how we can make our infrastructure more efficient, thinking about how we can make our sales and marketing uh, more efficient as well. So really span across. And um, how has the use of data science um, evolved to de deliver a better user experience for users of LinkedIn? Yeah, so first of all, I think we, uh, LinkedIn is a, uh, in general, we, we truly believe that everybody can benefit from um, better data, uh, better data access uh, in general. So uh, we, we certainly, uh, with uh, using data to continuously understand better of what our members are looking for, uh, uh, as a, a simple example is that we, whenever we uh, launch a new feature, uh, we are not just blindly decide ourselves that it's the better feature for our members, but we actually understand how our users react into it, right? So we use data to understand that, and then certainly making decisions uh, and, and whether we should be eventually launching this feature to all members or not. So that's a very prominent way for us to uh, use data. And obviously we also use data to understand and just uh, uh, even before we're building certain features, is this sort of feature that's right uh, feature to build? Uh, we do both uh, uh, survey uh, and understand the survey data, but also at the same time understanding just user behavior data for us to be able to uh, come up with better features for, for users. And do you use A-B testing as well? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So we uh, we we do a uh, lots of A-B experiments. That's what I, I was not trying to use that word, but like uh, a, that terminology, but this is what we, we use to uh, have an understanding of is the features that we are developing that we are putting in front of our users, is that what they enjoy as much as we think they would enjoy. Right. Um, so you had a talk today about uh, creating global economic opportunities with responsible data. So give us some highlights from your talk. So, uh, so for, first of all, uh, um, at LinkedIn, we, uh, we truly believe in the vision that we are working towards, which is really creating econo economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. And if you're kind of starting from that and thinking about that is our uh, sort of the, th the, the, the axiom that we're working towards, and then thinking about how you can do that, and then obviously the, the sort of the table stake or just the, the um, uh, the, the fundamental thing that we have to start with is to be able to preserve the privacy of our members as we are leveraging the data that our members entrust with us, right? So how can we do that? We have some early effort in, in, in using and developing differential privacy uh, as a technique for us to do a lot better with regarding preserving that privacy as we are leveraging the data. Um, but also at the same time, it doesn't end there, right? Because you're thinking about uh, creating opportunity. It's not just about let's preserve the privacy, but also when we are leveraging the data, how can we leverage the data in a way that is able to create opportunity in a fair way? Uh, so, so there is also a lot of effort that we're having uh, with regarding how can we do that and what does fairness mean? Uh, what are the ways we can actually turn some of the key concepts that we have into action that is really able to drive the way we develop product, the way that we're thinking about responsible design, and the way that we build our algorithms, uh, the way that we measure in every single dimension. And, and speaking about that bias, um, uh, at the opening address, um, they mentioned that diversity is really great because it provides many perspectives um, and also helps reduce this bias. So how have you at LinkedIn been able to create a more diverse um, team? 
so first of all, uh, I think it's certainly there. Uh, there is a. Um, uh, we all believe that diversity is certainly um, better as we're building product. Thinking about if you have uh, a diverse team that is really a a representation of the customers and the members that you're serving, then, then you definitely are, uh, are better to be able to come. You, come, you are able to come up with better features that is able to serve the needs of the, the population uh, of our member. Um, but I'll just also at the same time, um, that's just the right thing to do as well, right? Thinking about, um, uh, we, we all uh, have had uh, experiences this way, we may not, you know, feel as much belong when we walk into a room that we are the only person of uh, that we identify with to be in that room, and and we we certainly wanted to be able to create that environment uh, for all the employees uh, as well, and and thinking about I think there is also uh, studies that has done as what makes a high performing team. Uh, some of the studies that's done at Google with uh, uh, the the psychological safety uh, aspects of it, which is really there's a lot of brain science that says when you make people feel they belong, that they will actually be so much more creative and innovative and everything, right? So we have that belief. Um, and But uh, tactically, there are many things that we're doing uh, from uh, all the dibs aspect, right? How can you bring diversity, inclusion, and belonging? Um, and uh, you know, starting from uh, uh, hiring, right? So we, we certainly are very much emphasized uh, on can, how, how can we increase the diversity of individuals that we're bringing to LinkedIn. And when they are uh, at LinkedIn, can we make them feel more belong and then feel more included in, in every aspect? We have different inclusion groups, uh, right? We have, I mean, obviously, I'm very much involved in women in tech uh, at LinkedIn. Uh, we have uh, both uh, uh, many efforts that we, we do to help women at LinkedIn in engineering and in other groups as well to feel they belong uh, to this community. At the same time, there is uh, concrete actions that we're taking too, right? That we are helping women to uh, have a much better understanding and aware of some of the ways that we operate that is slightly different from maybe our male colleagues would operate, right? There are certain things that we're doing to change the current processes, hiring processes, promotion process, that we are able to bring more equal footing to the way that we're thinking about gender uh, gap and gender diversity. Right, that's great. And what advice would you give to women who are just starting college or who are um, just out of college who are interested in going into data science? So, uh, I want to say the the biggest learning for me uh, is just have that can-do attitude. Uh, y you know, the uh, y the um, woman biologically and or just in like in every way, we are, we're not any uh, less than men. And then you certainly have seen many uh, strong and very talented women uh, that we have in the field. So don't let. Uh, people's perception or biases around you to bring you down and then thinking about what you wanted and then just go for it and then go for the the advice that you can get from people and then there, there are so many and the, we can see in the conference today so many talented women that you can reach out to who are willing and very willing to help you as well. And in this uh, age of AI and ML, um, where do you see data science going in the future? That's a really uh, uh, interesting question. So, uh, in, in the way that you know, data science, I want to say it's a field that is really broad, mm -hmm. uh, right? So, if you're thinking about uh, uh, things that I would consider to be part of data science, may not necessarily be part of AI. Uh, some of the the, the causal inference uh, that is extremely popular and important, and then there, and uh, there, um, uh, the the I think the the fields will continue to evolve. Um, uh, there are going to be, uh, and then the fields are continually overlapping uh, with each other as well. You cannot do data science without understanding or have a, str have a strong uh, skill in AI and in machine learning. And you also cannot have, you can't do great machine learning without understanding the data science either, right? So thinking about some of the, the talk uh, that Daphne Kohler earlier uh, was sharing, as in, uh, you know, you can you can blindly run your algorithm and without realizing the bias uh, that all the the algorithm is really just detecting uh, the machines that's used in the in the images versus you know actually detecting the difference between broken bones or not, right? Like so, so I think having 
I, I do see there is a continuously big overlap, and I think the, the individuals who are involved in both communities should continue to be very comfortable being in that way, too. Right, right. Yeah, thank you so much for being on theCUBE, and thank you for your insight. Of course, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm your host, Sonia Tagare. Thank you for watching theCUBE, and stay tuned for more.